Hi, welcome back to PSLE Math Hybrid State Lesson. Today we are going to continue with our methods, right? And one of the methods that we want to talk about is systematic listing. Uh, this is a very simple method, uh, not very hard to use. Uh, however, this method has its own disadvantages. Uh, what are the disadvantages? Uh, when you come across difficult problems, right? Something similar to this problem, but when the numbers get bigger, then this method will be hard to use then you will have to think of a different way to solve the problem. And there is actually a better way to solve this problem than using this method. So that better way is called uh, the model drawing. All right, what kind of model? Now, there are many kinds of model that, uh, that you can draw. Like you have the uh, comparison model, you have the parts and units model, you have before and after model, uh, you have the something like stacking model, and then this model uh, that we can use to draw uh, will be your excess and shortage model. So there are different kinds of model that are out there that you can actually use it to, to work out this problem. Uh, but today we are not going to look at the model drawing. We are going to look at this method that is good for primary four students because the problems are not so, uh, they are not so difficult and the numbers are not so big at P4 level. But when going to P5 and P6, then you may not want to use this method because the numbers will get bigger. So how do I use this, uh, this systematic listing? Now, it, you have to create a table, a table like a guess and check table, something like a, like, a, like a table that you put your numbers inside. So let's read the question to understand why is it excess and shortage. Now, Mr. David gets some cookies to his, to his pupils. So we don't know how many, uh, how many pupils he has. We also don't know how many cookies he had. If he gave each pupil seven cookies, he will have 10 cookies left. If he gave each pupil nine cookies, he will be short of four. So the excess is the leftover, which is your leftover, the excess. And the shortage is the short of, the not enough, means you don't have enough. So how many pupils did Mr. David have? So this problem uh, is clearly an excess and shortage problem. And for some problems, uh, it could be excess and excess problem, right? Excess and excess. Uh, it could also be shortage and shortage problem. So there are different kinds of excess and shortage problem. But for this question, it is an excess and shortage problem. Uh, so whether it's excess or shortage, excess and shortage, or excess and excess, or whatever, uh, when you draw the model, you can it will be quite easy right, to work out the answer very fast. Uh, but nevertheless, today we are looking at the table. So how do we draw the table? You need to draw rows, okay, three rows, and then cut into columns. So we cut one column uh, because we need to label. So what do you call the first box? Uh, let's call it the number of pupils. Okay, pupils. And then the second box, I will call it the how many cookies. Okay, and then the last row, the last box, the last, the last row, I will call it the total number of cookies. And then we can put the numbers inside. So you start with one pupil. So if you give each pupil seven cookies, so one pupil gets seven, he will have 10 cookies left. So you have to plus 10. So when you have excess, then you have to plus 10. So seven plus 10 will become 17. And then you do the same for two, three, four, and five pupils. So we are not going to write a, too many friends. We just write until maybe about five friends uh, because we are going to compare later to see whether can you find a common number. So you have two pupils, so that'll be two times seven, three times seven, four times seven, and five times seven. So you actually see multiples of seven. It's like a pattern, right? There's a pattern here. That's why it's called systematic, right? A systematic listing, listing of numbers. And it's systematic because it follows a pattern. And then uh, how about the total? You have 14 plus 10, that'll be 24. Then 21 plus 10, and then 28 plus 10, and then 35 plus 10, okay, right? Okay, then how about the next table? Then you need to draw a next table, a second table. Why do you draw a second table? Because there are two if, two conditions, right? Two conditions, so you have two tables. So again, you can label pupils, how many pupils, and how many cookies, and the total number of cookies. So if you give each pupil nine cookies, right, he will be short of four. So when you have shortage, means you have to minus because not enough. So one pupil again, right, one pupil, and one pupil gets nine, and he'll be short of four. So nine minus four is five. So he only has five. And then you continue with two pupils, three, four, and five pupils. So multiples of nine. Two times nine, three times nine, four times nine, and five times nine, and then you minus four. So 18 minus 4 will be 14, 27 minus 4 
will be 23 or you can also plus 9 okay plus 9 and then here you plus 9 and then here you also plus 9 so there are different ways to get your numbers so you get 32 uh, uh, there will be how many 33 plus 9 will be uh, uh, let me see so uh, minus 4 minus 4 32 yep 32 and then plus 9 again that will be 41 okay 41 so what's the less, what's the disadvantage here? Now the disadvantage here is you can see there's a lot of adding. Your thumb table, you have to know your thumb table, multiples of seven, multiples of nine. Uh, you also have to subtract and add carefully, right? Plus and minus carefully. So this is a disadvantage because there's a lot of mental working going on, right? Mental calculation. So if you make a mistake, then it will affect your answer. So that is a disadvantage. Okay, now, then you look at the last row. Do you see any common number in the last row? You don't see any common number. You look at the total, right? If you look at the total, uh, like do you see any common number in this in this last row? Uh, there isn't. So that is another disadvantage because if you don't have a common number, then what happened? Then you will have to continue to list out your numbers, right? You have to continue to write out your numbers. So this method isn't very useful, right? Isn't very good. <clears throat> Uh, but it's applicable for P4 students, right, if the numbers are small. But if the numbers are big, right, then you may have to change your method. Uh, so, so, but nevertheless, you still have to know this method because in the event that you cannot draw the model or you don't know how to draw the SS and shortage model, uh, then you will have to come back to this method to try to work out the answer because you will still get your method marks in the exam. So you have six friends, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I have so I have another five friends again. And then six times seven will be 42, seven times seven, eight times seven, nine times seven, 10 times seven. Okay, so you have to be careful when you do the adding. So 42 plus 10, 10 plus 10. So 49 plus 10, 56 plus 10, right? And then you plus, uh, and then you plus 10 again, and then you plus 10 again, right? Okay, then you do the same thing for the second table. So you have 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So 6 times 9, 54. 7 times 9, 63. 8 times 9, 72. 9 times 9, 81. And 10 times 9 is 90. Then you minus 4. So you will get 50 minus 4. Then 72 minus 4 will be 64. Then you minus 4, uh, minus 4 will be how many? Uh, minus 4, minus 4 will be, minus 4 will be 77. Is it correct? Plus 9, plus 9, minus 4. Oh, see, that's a mistake already. See, that's why you have to be very careful when you do this. Yeah, so that's a mistake. So what's the mistake? Okay, let me just turn back, turn back the, okay, now, let's try again. 54, minus 4 is 50. 63 minus 4 is 59, 72 minus 4 is 68. All right, so this is the danger. When you have this method, this is why I purposely show this method to you so that you can see why it's not so good to have this method, to use this method all the time because of the mental calculation, all right? You can make a lot of mistakes if you are not careful. So 72 minus 4 is 68, 81 minus 4 is 77, 90 minus 4 is 86, right? 86. Okay, all right. And then let's see whether can you find a same number, right? You cannot find a number. There's no same number again. <laughs> okay, so what happened? You can't find a same number, right? Hmm, 14, 14. Can you find a same number? Yes, we can find a same number. <laughs> so another, now another disadvantage is this, okay. Another disadvantage is this is just now I had some difficulty trying to find the number which is the same. So when you have too many numbers, your, your eye becomes very dizzy, right? Very dizzy with too many numbers. But actually, if you look carefully, you have found the number already, right? There's a common number here, which is 59. And here also 59, 
right? There's a common number. And not only is there a common number, there is also another common number, which is the how many pupils. So once you get the number of pupils and the total number of cookies in the same column, right? In both tables. In both tables, you have the, the same number of pupils and you also have the total number of cookies in the two tables, then you actually have solved the problem already. So how many pupils did Mr. David have? So the answer will be seven, right? So David has seven pupils, and if the question asks you how many cookies uh, did he bake or did he gave, uh, then the answer will be 59, right? So you can see that it's a very good example to show you uh, why this method is not quite good, right? Not quite good. Uh, but it is uh, good for those who are at primary 4 level uh, because the numbers may be smaller, right? And then it will be easier to use this table. Uh, but it's not quite good because of uh, because if you don't get the common numbers, right, then you have to write keep writing a lot of numbers there. That's number one. Number two, it's not c quite good. It's also because uh, you have to be very careful with your mental working, mental calculation. Like just now, I make a little mistake in the calculation, and then then what happened? So if you never watch the mistake or never, uh, if you if you don't know the mistake, then you will have your answer will be affected as well. So you need to uh, be very careful with your mental sum, mental calculation. Uh, so and and that is the reason why this method is a. Uh, uh, not very not very good to use. So is there a better way to do this? Yes, there is a better way to do this, which is the model drawing. And that model, what do we call that model? We call it the assess and shortage model. And through that model, in less than two minutes, you should be able to get the answer very fast. Okay, but that will be for the next time. <laughs> okay, today we will just talk about this systematic listing. So it is a method that we use. And it is a method that I also teach. I also teach my students at primary four level because, uh, because it's easy to work out the answer. It's very straightforward. It's very simple to understand. Straightforward. Uh, at primary four level, uh, most likely you will not you will not see a lot of numbers being written in the table. Most likely, okay. Doesn't mean that it will not happen. Uh, but usually the problems for systematic listing, the problems are a little simpler to work out the answer using this method. Okay, so we are done. All right, so we so ho hopefully at the end of the lesson today, you understand what is systematic listing, which is a very common method to use. And of course, uh, there is also something better out there that can be used to replace this method as well. All right, so I'll see you in the next heuristic lesson.